to Luke chapter 3. I kind of want to touch on that kingdom of heaven. Right. Suffered violence. <laughs> and the violence taken by force. Oh, oh my God. Come on. Come on. Go ahead and go to Luke chapter 3. You see, Jesus would be crucified. <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven was suffered by him <clears throat> because he brought the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> How many know that? That's right. <clears throat> but by his crucifixion, he would give us the power <clears throat> to take back huh. <laughs> our dominion. That's right. But the devil has stole from you. <laughs> Praise God. Come on. But many times, if we stay complacent, we don't take that dominion back. And Satan deceives you. Hmm. You must rise up. If you want the devil out of your life, even as a Christian, if you want the devil out of your household, you must rise up and say, Go in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Come on. He don't say, well, You're devil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the kingdom of heaven oh, suffers violent, and the violent take it by force. You need to take your dominion back that Jesus has already paid for you. Right? Amen. He's already paid for you to have dominion over your life. Yeah. Amen. You don't need psychiatrists or pills and all that junk. You need the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah, yeah. But if you continue to complain, you say, oh, I just I ain't got no power. I just don't have it. And you won't. Because the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. The cross is happened. Jesus went to the cross to give you power and dominion over your personal life. Come on. It doesn't mean you go out with a, a gun, a Tommy gun, start shooting people up. I'm taking it by force. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. No. This is a personal work in your personal life. Mm -hmm. If you've got sickness inside of you, you've got a headache this morning, yeah. then you need to take it by force. Jesus, by His stripes, am I healed. I believe it's in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Come on. You right. can't oh, me, oh, devil. That's right. Leave me alone. Man, I've had to do this stuff. I'm not kidding with you. Mm. Trust me. Hallelujah. He works on all night long, all last night. <laughs> My eyes hurt all night for nine hours. Come on, preacher. I'm not lying to you. I try to put eyes on them. I try to put a rag on them. I put these little round things and Candace and them have in the refrigerator got the eyeballs on it that you put on your eyes, I guess for looks or something, to keep the wrinkles off. I don't know. I was trying to get these things to keep hurting my eyes. In the name of Jesus, leave me alone. Leave. I know I'm healed. you got to take it. That's right. you got to rise up. That's right. I'm telling you, or you'll never walk. That's right. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence, but I just wanted to touch on that real quick. Amen. <laughs> Woo. Go with me to Luke chapter 3. I know you're there. God will raise up those outside of the religious box, people. Mm -hmm. You notice that he was out in the wilderness. Did y'all hear that? All right. He was out in the wilderness. He wasn't in the temple. Wait a minute, he wasn't a Pharisee? He wasn't the high priest? Mm -hmm. No. That's right. He was out in the wilderness. Watch this. Luke chapter 3. Verse 1. I'm going to try to go through this name. <laughs> now, the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of Ateria, and of the region of Trachonus, and Lysenius, the tetrarch of Abilene, Ananias and Caiaphas being the high priest, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. Did y'all see that? Hmm. He named the high politicians. <laughs> he named the high priest of the temple, the religious leaders behind the pit, the one who read the scrolls. But the word of God didn't come to him. Mm -hmm. Do you know there was a famine in the land from hearing the word of God for 430 years? Uh. From Malachi to Matthew, if you read the Bible, you'll know from Malachi to Matthew, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, bang, right there was 430 years. Wow. God didn't speak. There was not a prophet. There wasn't wow. a word. All they had was scrolls, and they tried to interpret which way they wanted to interpret it. That's why you had the Pharisees, the Essenes, the Zealots, the Sadducees. You had all these different groups like we got now. You got all these different denominations. Nobody knows what they're talking about because they hadn't heard a word from God. They're still trying to interpret things that they don't know nothing about. Come on. Come on. Because if they had heard the word of the Lord, come they would come together in one accord and stop all the division. Come on. Because that's what God's Amen. all about. He's not about strife and division. He's about one accord. Amen. Just like the family union. When the family unit is split up, you think that's of God? That's nope. not of God. That's of man. Come on. Now, we make mistakes and we can be forgiven and the church can be forgiven also, but we're going to have to come back together and want to call it. Amen. Uh, but the Word of God didn't come to the religious leaders. It came to John hmm. out in the wilderness. Now, don't you know that made them mad? Come on. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> come on, preacher. It's in my bloodline to be King Herod, King of the Jews. It's in my bloodline to be the high priest a Levite priest by the order, by the order of the law. Yet God 
didn't speak to them, did he? Why? Because their hearts had waxed cold. The hearts have become religious. Some people have a head knowledge of the Word of God, but they got no spirit in them. <laughs> they know the Word backwards and forwards, and they can quote it. But they, got, they do not have the Holy Spirit's understanding on how to use the Word of God. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever met anybody like that? Mm -hmm. uh -oh. They'll quote Scripture to you, but they don't have the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. There's many cults formed like that. Mm -hmm. They quote Scripture, but they don't have the Spirit of the living God. These Pharisees and Sadducees and Essenes and Zealots, they had Scripture. They had the scrolls. They had the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. They had these things, but they did not have the word of the Lord. But John did. Yes. And they went out there to see, oh my, something else is me. This doesn't mean it was John's theory. Everybody said, well, he's preaching over That's just his theology. That's his theory about that. Let me tell you, when you're quoting the scriptures and you're putting them straight out there and you're not trying to mix them all up and play with them, you're just telling it what the Word says, that's God. That's, God. that's His Word. Mm -hmm. It's not my Word that tells you that homosexuality is an abomination. It's not my Word that says, right. thou shalt not steal. It's not my Word that says, come out of fornication. It's not my Word that says, be conformed to the image of Christ. That's God's Word. That's God's word. So right. when John was out there preaching, that was God talking. Mm -hmm. Hello. Right. Mm -hmm. That was Him trying to instruct people. Oh my goodness, oh. it wasn't his theory. Hmm. <laughs> I want y'all to know that. Hmm. The word of God came unto John. Verse 3, And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Hmm. What did he preach? The baptism of what? Repentance. repentance. I'll keep going for it. As it was written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice hmm. of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare you... The way of the Lord make his path straight. Uh -oh. Many people believe they're saved these days, but they've never repented. Hmm. They never desire to turn from their nasty sin. They never desire to come out of sin. Hmm. They believe they're right in their sin. They believe they're right in it. And they say, I'm saved anyway. But John said, Oh no, I come preaching the baptism of repentance. That means to Turn. Oh, to turn. That was his major message, people. Mm -hmm. He didn't have all these messages that we got nowadays and people conjure up and say, okay, we're going to preach a series on this and we're going to preach psychology here in the church and we're going to talk about wives and husbands getting along and we're going to talk about this. You ask John what he's going to preach about. John was going to preach about Repent! <laughs> oh, John, what about next month? Repent! Repent. What about Repent. December? Sure, you're going to have a Christmas special. Repent! Repent. Come to the Lord Jesus. Make his path straight. 